But, uh, so what's on today? Uh, I'll tell you about what we've done for the last year. Uh, I'll tell you what the uh, lithium story, in fact, for that matter, the uh, energy metal story is all about, and that's uh, lithium batteries for dummies. Then we've got uh, the adults only sealed section, and you all have to stay for that if you're over the age of 18. Then I'll talk about building a sustainable future in lithium batteries, and then I'll uh, restate the bleeding obvious. So, lithium storage, what's it all about? It's, it's clearly about the biggest change that we've seen in energy management since the Industrial Revolution. And if you have a look at the uh, transition we've gone through, historically, beasts of burden, steam power, Stevenson's rocket rolling down the cobbles in London, the internal combustion engines, let's call them the legacy engines, they're just about gone. The fight over ACDC with uh, Tesla and Edison, Edison, and uh, of course Edison failed, Tesla won AC power and we went to the power grid. But today we've got the all-encompassing power management system, the lithium battery. So we've got renewable power on tap 24-7, and we've got completely portable energy. Now, that's what the energy metals are about. Wow. I think we've done all of that. Ah, uh, and he, he, here's the board, George Bork on the left. Uh, he's the managing director of Northern Minerals. Uh, heavy rare earth producer. Incidentally, that's a company that I floated 11 years ago and I'm still on the board, so George has got uh, plenty of exposure to the energy metals. Myself and Dicko, of course, who is revitalising the Waluna gold mine. So uh, there's about 300 years of experience there. Uh, so the last year, 2016, 2017, was all about commercialising the silage process, which Jerry mentioned. And that's a hydro-metallurgical process, so no roasting. No roasting, and that'll, that'll uh, extract the lithium. In fact, it'll extract any of the metals out of any silicate uh, mineral. We've also used it for uh, the extraction of gold uh, by leaving the gold behind and removing everything else from around it. But uh, in doing that commercialisation, we have become, without a shadow of doubt, the only company in the world capable of recovering lithium from every silicate mineral without roasting. We've also had a look at uh, uh, a lot of different minerals. And let's say the, the minerals that are in the two hard baskets. So we've looked at uh, things like lithium micas, we've looked at amphiboles, we've looked at uh, pyroxenes. Pyroxenes, of course, uh, include spodumene. Uh, and we've looked at uh, many other minerals, and yes, we can process the whole lot of them, and we've embarked on a global exploration program. I've got to say, not with the intent of digging holes, this is our insurance policy. Uh, the main thrust of our business is processing technology, but we have probably the, the largest lithium exploration portfolio of any company in the world. We've got seven projects in Western Australia, one in Northern Territory. This is a little bit like the uh, periodic table song. One in Northern Territory two in South Australia, four in Queensland, uh, one in Mexico, uh, one in Germany and six in Canada. So what's the future? The future's about sustainability and the applications of technologies to build sustainable uh, lithium batteries. Now, the technologies at the moment are far from perfect. And we, as Lithium Australia, recognise many of the impediments involved in bringing these things to fruition. And if you have a look at the materials that go into these lithium batteries, there is certainly a susceptibility to supply, um, apart from Andrew's deposit, of course. But uh, most of the cobalt around the globe is produced as a byproduct of copper and nickel mining. And not only that, there are ethical constraints, conflict minerals, most of it coming out of... Uh, uh, the Congo, you've got embedded chi child labour. You've got very low recycling rates of any of these materials, so we're in a use it uh, and throw away society, very, very wasteful, and we have underutilised waste streams around the world. So what we need to do is plan the future a lot more constructively than we're doing at the moment. We need to get much better utilisation out of resources, out of raw materials. 
we need to get higher recycling rates for the energy metals. And that's the, the mobile. How many of you guys have got a mobile phone sitting in your, your bottom drawer at home? No, come on, be honest. How many are there? There are currently 19 million of them around Australia sitting in bottom drawers. That's nearly one for every man, woman and child. And of course, the kids at, kind oh, the kids at kindergarten do use them, I suppose. But uh, today, out of uh, all of those, those batteries that come into the marketplace in Australia, only 10% of them get recycled. Not only that, most of the lithium ever mined ends up in tailing streams around the world. You look at a good lithium operation, they generally only have a recovery of uh, about 70%. Uh, what happened to the other 30% is sitting in mine dumps or tailings. You have a look at uh, uh, tin producers, tantalum producers, kaolin producers. They all pull lithium minerals, primarily mica, out of their material. They actually separate them in some places, making what we would consider to be an ore concentrate and then bury it. So you've got these uh, remarkable situations where there are recoverable materials there and uh, what Lithium Australia is doing from a technological point of view is trying to develop a circular economy for the production and utilisation of lithium batteries. And now the part you're all waiting for, the sealed section. The no-go zone, so one last warning if you're under 18, get out of here. But an hour ago, we went into a trading halt, and the reason we went into a trading halt was, and I'll rely on the disclaimer and the fact that uh, you require parental guidance to listen to this section, what Jerry told you was bullshit. <laughs> and so here's, here's what we're about. You can see there the various parts in the cycle. You can see metal salt production in the blue, cathode production in the orangey colour, battery use in grey, uh, the mobile phones that you've got in your bottom, uh, bottom drawer uh, on the little arrow out of the, uh, the grey section there, and uh, the recycling section in yellow. So we've done a lot of research in the recycling section. We've developed the silage process to put new materials into the uh, chemical stream that makes that battery. And as of about an hour ago, uh, we've mounted uh, a friendly takeover for a company that produces or has produced in the past some of the best battery cathode material in the world. And this is a staggering feat and it was all done here in Brisbane and I don't think anyone's ever heard of it. So the development of cathodes, how are we going to do that? We're acquiring the control of a, a company, it almost sounds Chinese, doesn't it? The very small particle company, but it does describe fairly adequately what they do. They produce very small particles. Uh, the, these guys, in producing the, the very small particles, incidentally, uh, in the last 10 years, have spent 30 million, yes, 30 million dollars on research. And fortunately for Lithium Australia, ran out of money. Um, so we hope to... Uh, complete that transaction, uh, pick up control of that company for a, a very good price on both sides of the ledger, I might add. It's a, a great deal for them, great deal for us. Recommission their, their uh, pilot plant, which, as I mentioned, is based here in, in Brisbane. Get back into the production of the, the world's most advanced cathode materials and the technology that's been developed here. It's mind-blowing, but it's remarkably simple, and I think that's the case with most good inventions. And there they are, the very small particles. So uh, this company provides innovation, patent-protected chemical processing to deliver those sorts of materials into the cathode industry. And that gives us, ultimately, a fast track to commercialisation to cathode production. So what's our plan? To provide these... Uh, uh, evolutionary technologies to put uh, metals back into uh, the battery industry in the lowest cost quartile. Uh, and that'll be achieved by commercial, commercialising silage. And we've already gone through most of this process. We've already produced battery grade carbonate. We're in the final throes of redesigning a plant. Um, and that's an interesting story in itself. Uh, and then we'll commercialise the production of the cathode materials. And of course, that's already been successful in producing the best cathode materials in the world. 
and mothballed, and then we'll implement our recycling plan. And that I would love to tell you a lot about that, but haven't got the time. But let, let's have a look at lithium and the, uh, the cycle with respect to lithium. It comes from two major sources, hard rock and lithium brines. You can see the hard rock there on the right, the lithium brines on the left, and they're split about 50-50. So what silage does is provides people with a paradigm shift in processing technology. So you can process a lot of the materials that aren't otherwise processed, the minerals such as lithium micas, that there's been no process sheet available, process flow sheet, sheet available for in the past. And you can take off spec materials such as low grade concentrates. And I believe that's got uh, a very strong parallel to what we saw in Broken Hill over 100 years ago where people couldn't, so to speak, sort the shit from the clay. They couldn't separate the, uh, the zinc from the lead. And as a consequence, uh, about three out of every four tonnes of material that came out of the Broken Hill mines at that stage ended up on the waste dumps until an enterprising brewer, an expert in making froth, came up with the process of froth flotation, ably aided by a whole lot of guys down a local pub, I might add, that continued testing the product. Um, but this gives us the, the ability to go from alpha spodumene to zinwaldite, all in solution, no roasting, various extraction curves there for sulfuric acid leach. You can throw all of those out the window by putting in the right sort of reagents, get everything to act, react at the same rate, and that is silage. That's been pilot tested fairly uh, independently at ANSTO, the Australian Nuclear Science and Technology Organisation uh, that runs the reactor at Lucas Heights. So that, that pilot plant that you see there was built on site uh, at, at uh, ANSTO. There's a snapshot of the process, the way it works. Sulfuric acid in, slurry in, uh, a bit of fluorine in the, the form of calcium fluoride with the slurry. Very important to mix it in the right sequence to make sure you don't uh, produce things like HF, but uh, it is possible to do this without the generation of any HF. And when you do that, everything dissolves and goes into solution. So you don't only have the lithium to get uh, uh, revenue out of, you have every other metal that was in the stuff that you put into that uh, uh, processing stream, you get every other metal in solution. Uh, and what does this do to the uh, operating cost pro profile? You can see in the, uh, the, the grey line there, the average operating cost profile for most hard rock producers. Uh, down on the left-hand side, the brine producers, and after by-product credits where we expect to be in red. Uh, recycling an imperative to closing the loop. I'll just flick through this fairly quickly. Uh, we've got advanced programs going both in uh, North America and Australia looking at uh, supply of that material utilisation, where it's going and how we can uh, circumvent that and get processing technology back in to re recirculate uh, the metals out of those batteries. So in conclusion, stating the bleeding obvious, why invest in Lithium Australia? Well, we are making our best efforts to contribute to a sustainable lithium future. Now, in doing that, of course, we plan to generate a lot of dollars because uh, look at the uh, metal recycling business, probably the cheapest source of battery metals on the planet are the batteries that have already been made. Most of the mining cost and processing cost has already been expended, so why not reuse that? Why, for God's sake, would you throw 80% of those into waste? and have it buried as we do here in Australia. I'll tell you, tell you some stories one day about the Australian government. It's fairly sad stuff. Um, I am on a committee advising them with respect to uh, waste recycling. It's like bashing your head against a brick wall, uh, but one day they will listen. And there's the, the recycling of uh, energy metals. I've mentioned that um, extraction of uh, the, the metals from waste materials, high quality cathode production. We are, of of course, the first to be able to process all silicates in a hydrometallurgical flow sheet, 13, 12, running out of time. Uh, world first with silage, developing the world's best cathode technology, strategic partnerships and alliances in every province around the world, and very experienced management. Zero. Thank you.